Okay. Hello everyone, my name is Brendan Hamilton, this is my partner Keurig White, and today we are presenting some research done by a group of scientists at the Lund University in Sweden. Uh, they did an experiment looking at the promiscuity of antibody, antibody binding. The title of their research paper goes as follows, Epitope Specificity of Recumbent Antibodies Reveals Promiscuous Peptide Binding Properties. And to lead us into the introduction and some basic abstracts, Kirk? So here's some definitions that we need to go over before we actually get into the bulk of the paper. So the first definition we would like to cover is the word epitope. Um, that is the specific amino acid sequence which a protein will recognize on the peptide to bind to. So they're usually about four to six amino acids long and they're crucial for protein peptide interactions as they are the binding site of the protein. So um, the next definition is anchor residue. So this project deals a lot with specific anchor residues. So specific amino acids that are more important than others in the epitope. So an anchor residue on an epitope needs to be the same amino acid in the same position for the protein to be able to recognize and bind on to that. So that's pretty much just one that just holds the whole thing together. Yes, exactly. Holds everything together. Um, protein peptide interactions, that is just the interaction of a protein binding on to a peptide. Um, MHC proteins are talked about as the, the mechanism to antibody binding is similar to MHC binding. So an MHC protein um, binds very promiscuously to a wide variety of peptides. Um, one MHC protein can bind to almost any peptide out there. So very promiscuous binding. They've done that for a while, huh? Yes, yes, that research is not new, whereas the research here uh, about antibodies is. So a CDR is a structural region on a, on a protein. You can see it here, the primary sequence and the quaternary sequence. So that is the specific region which determines what an antibody can bind to. So that is actually the, the thing which gives an antibody its specificity. Um, sister pairs is another vocab word specific to this article. So when they were selecting which antibodies to use in this experiment, antibodies which bound to the same, uh, the same sequence for the peptide were considered sister pairs. So in this paper, there are six sister pairs. Well, six proteins in the three sister pairs. So three pairs. Yes, there right. we go. All right, so for the abstract now, uh, this paper is important because peptide protein interactions are crucial to cellular function. Um, they have biological, medical, and proteonomic use. Um, the experiment analyzed eight different immunoglobin structures and their binding affinities. Um, all eight of the antibodies bound promiscuously, um, and each bound to about two to three anchor residues is what it was found to be most important. So instead of the epitope being between four and six amino acids long, and each of those being essential, really only about two or three of those were that important. Um, so when we were talking about the MHCs, they only had about one anchor residue, is that right? Yes, yes, um, that is true. Um, this experiment specifically looked at the C-terminus uh, peptides. So the only peptides that were looked at for binding promiscuity were the, the last five amino acids on a peptide. Um, that'll bring us into more of the method. Okay. Some of the basic introduction for this lab as already covered. Peptide bonding interactions are crucial within the cell. Uh, the researchers here suggest that about 30% of all cellular interactions are peptide protein interactions. Uh, modern day scientists have taken this into consideration with prosthetics and other things like that with human made protein binding things such as biosensors and protein modulators within the human body. Okay, so some of the general method that the researchers used for this experiment. First thing they did is they needed their antibodies and they selected eight of them total. As we talked about, six of them paired up nicely, which you can see here in the first figure. The last two did not share a specific epitope, so they were kind of stood by themselves. <clears throat> Excuse me. After these eight antibodies were selected, 
they attached them to a type of latex particle and ran them through a type of affinity chromatography. By running them through this type of chromatography, you get these dispersions of binding. Uh, once these complexes were created, these peptide antibody complexes, they were put through a mass spectroscopy instrument. Biscuit was able to give them which of the peptides bonded to these antibodies. And that's how we come up with these diagrams of your anchor residues. After hundreds, how many total was it? Uh, the paper said over 200. 200. So each of these antibodies was attacked in this affinity chromatography with 200 different peptides. And the results of binding are demonstrated in this chart. As Kirik will explain later, this means something, and he's excited to explain it. <laughs> Some of the other methods that they used after these complexes were created, obviously these graphs are generated, and these over here are three-dimensional models of the, of the antibodies. Throughout the paper, they refer to these antibodies as SIMS, not like the popular video game, spelled C-I-M-S. Context-independent, motif-specific antibodies. And I believe you wanted to explain these graphs in a little bit more detail, is that right? Yes, so in a little bit more detail, um, this type of graph showed each of these letters represents a specific amino acid, so R is arginine, uh, and so R is the biggest letter here, so this would be the anchor residue for that amino acid sequence. So, um, of all the peptides that are run across the antibodies stuck in latex, this is a summary of what stuck. So specifically, uh, peptides with uh, arginine in position 1 were sticking to CIMS17, indicating that R was the specific anchor residue for this. So the height of each letter indicates how important um, that specific residue is in the epitope. Um, Looks like R and K show up a lot in there. Yes, yes. That has something to do with how each of the um, selective motifs were selected. So in this case, almost all of the selective motifs had either R or K, uh, indicating again that the C terminus is essential for recognizing um, the peptides. Um, so figure two is more about the structure of the antibodies. So it only covers the six, the six sister clones and figures part A, B, C, and D goes over the uh, quaternary structure while figure E goes over the primary structure. So you can see how each one has a slightly different amino acid sequence. You can also see similarities in amino acid sequence between the sister clones. Um, so you can see again how the sequence of amino acids really, dif um, really defines w how specific the binding will, um, the binding of peptides. So, what is that going on? This thing up here it looks like they just took everything and mashed it all together. Yes, yes, that is all of the. Um, that's the quaternary structure of each of the four, or, um, each of the sister pairs. Yes. Just overlapped. Mm -hmm. So that kind of shows how they might be different in some cases. Because if you look at them individually, it's really not that easy to see any differences. And you overlap them like that, you can see all kinds of similarities with them. Yes, yeah, so that's an important figure. Clever. And we just talk about the results now, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right. So some of the big results that they got from this experiment was the high reliance on these anchor residues. From this chart, you can see the high reliance in the, in the first position, as well as some other positions in certain ones. If you look here at Sims 33, the first position and the third position are dominated by one specific amino acid. If you look at a variety of the other ones, that happens similarly as well. Oh, excuse me. One of the other big results that these researchers drew was that the sister Sims clones 1 and 33 these two pairs right here were discovered and chosen using the same bonding motif, but they were able to bind to a variety of sets of peptides, indicating that even with this specific motif, they still have a large availability to them. Okay. Yeah, it says here uh, the number of peptides that each antibody bound to. So for this sister pair, uh, this one bound to 318 different peptides, while wow. this one only bound to 133. 
uh, you can see a lot lower number, CIMS1AO5, only bound to 23 different peptides. And then its sister bound to almost 100 more. So again, you can see how even if the antibodies were selected for the same original epitope, they're still very different in uh, the level of promiscuity each one will express. Okay. Some of our basic discussion we have for this, they discussed how the peptide interactions are, are absolutely critical for cellular function. They emphasize this excessively throughout the article. Uh, they also like to emphasize the fact that the promiscuity exhibited by these antibodies is on a spectrum. Not every antibody has the same promiscuity. As you can see from here, 45 versus 200, 300 versus 100. They are not exactly the same. The fact that they bind to more than two throws away the old thought that they were very, very specific in all of these spots, not just one or two. And then the final, one of the bigger, other bigger things that they discussed in this is that they think that a total of 2,000 motifs would be enough for the entire human proteome, where before they needed one per antibody. So we're talking, what did you say, 10 million down to 2,000? Yes, um, so that is a huge jump. Um, if you previously believed you needed 10 million different uh, antibodies to cover the human proteome. And then some of the things I would like to investigate in the future of this team of scientists is what would happen if you looked at the N-terminal rather than the C-terminal. They suspect that you're going to have about the same results, but they'd like to see the differences. Uh, it's also important to, um, to talk briefly about specific uh, amino acids as the, residue, um, as the anchor residues. Uh, specifically, tryptophan was more important in the primary structure and tryptophan correlated with the anchor residues. So does tryptophan actually contribute to protein peptide interactions more than other amino acids? I call it a hot spot. Yes, yes. Mm. Right, well, thank you for listening in. I've been Brendan Hamilton. This is Kirik White. All credit goes to these researchers. They did a wonderful job. And we thank you and wish you have a good day.